everyone and welcome to the Dr. Eugene Clark Library's virtual story time. It's spring and so we are talking about flowers. It's blooming time. So we have a couple of great books to share with you this week and we also have a sign of the week. So first we'll start with our sign of the week which is flower and the way we do that is we just kind of pretend that we're holding a flower and we go from this side to this side on our nose. Flower. It's like we're smelling a flower flower. All right. And the books that we're going to share with you this week, the first one is Flowers Are Calling by Rita Gray. It looks like this. And we also are going to share Eric Carl, The Tiny Seed. All right. So we hope you'll enjoy those books. Uh, we also have a song that we're going to share with you in just a little bit. So be ready. Here we go. We're going to talk about flowers. All right, so first we have a song to share with you, and I asked some friends to come and help me so that we could sing this song called Planting, Planting Flowers, and it's to the tune of Peanut, Peanut Butter. We hope you enjoy. First you take the seed and you plant it, you plant it. First you take the seed and you plant it, you plant it. Planting, planting flowers for springtime. Planting, planting flowers for springtime. Next you take the shovel and you dig, you dig. Next you take the shovel and you dig, you dig. Planting, planting flowers for springtime. Planting, planting flowers for springtime. Put it in the soil and you cover, you cover. Put it in the soil and you cover, you cover. Planting, planting flowers for springtime. Planting, planting flowers for springtime. Next you take the can and you water, you water. Next you take the can and you water, you water. Planting, planting flowers for springtime. Planting, planting flowers for springtime. Give it lots of sun and it will sprout, will sprout. Give it lots of sun and it will sprout, will sprout. Planting, planting flowers for springtime. Planting, planting flowers for springtime. Look at all the flowers that are growing, are growing. Look at all the flowers that are growing, are growing. Planting, planting flowers for springtime. Planting, planting flowers for springtime. Planting, planting flowers for springtime. Woo! Okay. We had such a great time doing that song for you. Now we have our first book, which is Flowers Are Calling, Words by Rita Gray and Pictures by Kennard Papp. Here we go. Flowers Are Calling, Words by Rita Gray, Pictures by Kennard Papp. Flowers Are Calling, A Little Black Bear, no, not a bear. He doesn't care. They're calling a butterfly to dip from the air. Flowers are calling a wet green frog. No, not a frog. She likes her soggy bog. They're calling a bumblebee to look near their log. Flowers are calling a porcupine. No, not a porcupine. She wouldn't take the time. They're calling a hummingbird to sip at their vine. Queen Anne's lace Butterflies like a landing pad when they drink nectar. Monkshood. Bumblebees are hefty enough to push deep inside a monkshood flower where nectar is stored. Trumpet honeysuckle. Hummingbirds use their long tongues to reach the nectar hidden in deep tubular flowers and hover as they drink. Flowers are calling a loud blue jay. No, not a jay. He wouldn't stay. They're calling a honeybee to fly their way.
Flowers are calling a little moose. No, not a moose. What would be the use? They're calling a beetle to eat their pollen loose. Flowers are calling a rabbit to stop. No, not a rabbit. It's not their habit to call a rabbit. He might grab it. They're calling a bee fly to visit their spot. Apple tree blossom. Honeybees help make many of the fruits, nuts, and vegetables we eat by pollinating fruit tree blossoms such as the apple tree. There are also thousands of varieties of wild bees that help to make many of the foods we eat. Magnolia. Beetles have been visiting flowers for more than 100 million years. Violet. Bees flies, bee flies look like bumblebees, but have two wings instead of four. Like hummingbirds, they are able to hover their furry bodies in the air as they drink nectar. Flowers are calling a small brown snake. No, not a snake, for goodness sake. They're calling a pollen wasp with nectar to take. Flowers are calling a fat raccoon. No, not a raccoon. He doesn't care for white bloom or sweet perfume. They're calling a moth in the light of the moon. Flowers are calling a desert deer. No, not a deer. He can't even get near. They're calling a nectar bat to flap over here. Blow out beer tongue. Pollen wasps, like bees, make loaves of nectar and pollen to feed their young. Carden cactus. Lesser long-nosed bats have long tongues that can reach the nectar deep inside the bell-shaped flowers of the cardin cactus. These cactus flowers unfurl for just one short night. Moonflower and Carolina Sphinx Moth. Sphinx moths are expert flyers with very long tongues. Like cardin cactus, the blooms of moonflowers open for just one night and depend on the nighttime visits of moths for pollination. Flowers are calling a busy wren. No, not a wren. He's already seen them. They're calling some children to look again. Look at a flower. What do you see? Color. Flowers that have daytime visitors tend to have bright colors so they can be easily found among all the green foliage. Flowers with nighttime visitors tend to be pale with a very sweet smell, making them easier to locate in the dark. Many insects can't see the color red and are instead drawn to yellows and blues. Pattern. Many flowers use designs to help the pollinator find nectar right away. These designs are called nectar guides. How is the middle of your flower different from its outer part? Would these differences help a pollinator find nectar? Smell. Does your flower smell sweet or musky? Does it have any smell at all? Bees like sweet smells and beetles like fruity spicy scents. Night active moths love flowers as fragrant as perfume. Nectar bats like musky smells and some flies like rotten smells. Birds and butterflies use their eyes to find flowers instead of their sense of smell. Time of opening. Does your flower open in the daytime or the nighttime? If it is a night bloomer, it is calling to a night moth or nectar bat. 
Day bloomers are calling to birds and insects who find food in the sunshine. That's such a pretty book. We hope you enjoyed that one. We do have another song for you. This one is called I'm a Little Seedling and it goes to the tune of I'm a Little Teapot. So here we go. I'm a little seedling, I love the sun. Give me some water, let's have some fun. Put me in soil at the start of spring. When I grow up, we can all sing. All right, so we do have another book for you. Now this book is by Eric Carle and it's called The Tiny Seed. Eric Carle, The Tiny Seed. It is autumn. A strong wind is blowing. It blows flower seeds high in the air and carries them far across the land. One of the seeds is tiny, smaller than any of the others. Will it be able to keep up with the others? And where are they all going? One of the seeds flies higher than the others. Up, up, up it goes. It flies too high and the sun's hot rays burn it up. But the tiny seed sails on with the others. Another seed lands on a tall and icy mountain. The ice never melts and the seed cannot grow. The rest of the seeds fly on but the tiny seed does not go as fast as the others. Now they fly over the ocean. One seed falls into the water and drowns. The others sail on with the wind, but the tiny seed does not go as high as the others. One seed drifts down onto the desert. It is hot and dry and the seed cannot grow. Now the tiny seed is flying very low, but the wind pushes it on with the others. Finally, the wind stops and the seeds fall gently down on the ground. A bird comes by and eats one seed. The tiny seed is not eaten. It is so small that the bird does not see it. Now it is winter. After their long trip, the seeds settle down. They look just as if they are going to sleep in the earth. Snow falls and covers them like a soft white blanket. A hungry mouse that also lives in the ground eats a seed for his lunch. But the tiny seed lies very still and the mouse does not see it. Now it is spring. After a few months, the snow has melted. It is really spring. Birds fly by, the sun shines, rain falls. The seeds grow so round and full, they start to burst open a little. Now they are not seeds anymore. They are plants. First, they send roots down into the earth. Then their little stems and leaves begin to grow up toward the sun and air. There is another plant that grows much faster than the new little plants. It is a big fat weed and it takes all the sunlight and the rain away from one of the small new plants and that little plant dies. The tiny seed hasn't begun to grow yet. It will be too late, hurry! But finally, it too starts to grow into a plant. The warm weather also brings the children out to play. They too have been waiting for the sun and springtime. One child doesn't see the plants as he runs along and, oh, he breaks one. Now it cannot grow anymore. The tiny plant that grew from the tiny seed is growing fast, but its neighbor grows even faster. Before the tiny plant has three leaves, the other plant has seven. And look, a bud, and now, even a flower. But what is happening? First, there are footsteps. 
Then a shadow looms over them. Then a hand reaches down and breaks off the flower. A boy has picked the flower to give to a friend. It is summer. Now the tiny plant from the tiny seed is all alone. It grows on and on. It doesn't stop. The sun shines on it and the rain waters it. It has many leaves. It grows taller and taller. It is taller than the people. It is taller than the trees. It is taller than the houses. And now a flower grows on it. People come from far and near to look at this flower. It is the tallest flower they have ever seen. It is a giant flower. All summer long, the birds and bees and butterflies come visiting. They have never seen such a big and beautiful flower. It is autumn again. The days grow shorter, the nights grow cooler, and the wind carries yellow and red leaves past the flower. Some petals drop from the giant flower and they sail along with the bright leaves over the land and down to the ground. The wind blows harder. The flower has lost almost all of its petals. It sways and bends away from the wind but the wind grows stronger and shakes the flower. Once more, the wind shakes the flower and this time the flower's seed pod opens. Out come many tiny seeds that quickly sail far away on the wind. We have another song for you. This one is called Five Little Flowers and it goes to the tune of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. All right, here we go. Five little flowers growing in a row. The first one said, I'm purple, you know. The second one said, I'm pink as can be. The third one said, I'm blue like the sea. The fourth one said, I'm a very red fellow. The fifth one said, my color is yellow. Then out came the sun, big and bright, and five little flowers smiled in delight. We do want to remind you that we do have a craft this week that you can come by to pick up. This week we actually had flower seeds and we planted them. So you can come by and you can pick up this little bag and inside you will have a cup and some soil so that you can plant some flower seeds. Okay, so it has some directions on here. Just come by. You will also have an activity packet in there that has some things that you can do. This is a song that you can sing together and some other things that you can work on just to kind of keep talking about flowers and planting and springtime. Okay, come by the library and pick one up. That's all we have for you today. Thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget to come by the library to pick up an, um, a craft. We're going to be planting flowers this week. Um, inside the little program, you have the songs that we sang. Um, we also have a recipe on the back that you can try and hopefully you'll have some fun with that. Thanks again so much for watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and keep an eye out for us. All right, we have some really cool stuff happening. Please don't forget, keep reading. Bye everyone.